Hi everyone, Sandra here and I'm here today with my review of Hex by Thomas Uld Hevelt. This book was originally published in the Netherlands and I think it came out around 2012 in Dutch. This has been translated into English by Nancy Forrest Flyer. She's done a really, really good job. And the last few chapters were rewritten by Thomas in English because English is his second language. This is a horror story and he has been um, praised and um, compared to Stephen King. This is his first book that's come out in, in the English language. It came out in April in the UK and it is very, very creepy. So basically the residents of the town at Black Spring have the 17th century witch who wanders around the town whenever she wants to. She was killed in the 17th century as a witch because she had two children one of her children died and she raised him from the dead. Now they knew he died because they saw her burying him in the forest and then a few days later saw him walking around with her. So I can tell you this without giving you too many spoilers because it's just a bit of backstory as to why she haunts the town. So they killed her. Now she came back and started haunting them. So they discovered the town was cursed and that, oops, there goes the Wizard of Oz. They discovered that the town was cursed and that anyone who tries to leave Black Springs will want to kill themselves after a certain amount of time away. They become extremely uh, despairing and depressed. So in order to try and minimise the effect that the witch has on their lives, they chained her hands together so she can't wave her hands around and make spells. They also sewed her lips together so she can't speak the words and they also sewed her eyes to get the eyes up so she can't see. She can't put the, the evil eye on you. But still, she controls what goes on in this town. So we move to the modern day and it's Black Rock, or well, Black Springs is, is a few miles outside of New York City. People commute into university and work every day and back out. They can't stay out for too long. So it comes to a point where the young kids who have grown up in the 21st century with things like mobile phones and internet have decided that they don't like being kept away from the world like they are. They can't tell anybody, they can't show anybody. So Tyler and his friends start recording her. He records her on his GoPro um, and he posts videos to YouTube and he has a website called OYE or Open Your Eyes, which they thought was humorous. The story really revolves around Tyler and his family. His family, his mum and dad, Stephen and, and Jocelyn, and his younger brother, Matt, and what happens to them and the residents of the town during the period of the story, which is about a year, I would say. It's probably not even that. So they start recording the witch. They want to tell the world about the witch so she no longer has power over them, so that they can do what they want. Now the town's way of controlling things like the internet and Twitter and mobile phones is literally they have their own servers. So they have a keylogger so they can tell what anybody's posting at any one time and if it gets too risky they can shut it down. And this they do. Hex is the sort of town's defence mechanism. It, they, they have a lot of equipment of CCTV and things like that. They know where the witch is. Her name's Catherine. They know where she is at any time. And the town have got used to this, so they do ridiculous things. So if, for instance, she appears in their, their house, they just drape a, a dishcloth over them or a towel or, or something so that they don't have to look at her. If there are strangers in town and strangers do come through the town, and she's wandering around muttering so that they can't see, the, the, the outsiders can't see her, they'll enclose her with a group of other women or they'll set up a construction tent because sometimes she'll just stand there for hours muttering to herself. Now in, I think it was 69, the military tried to open her, her mouth so she has one corner of her mouth that she can just whisper through and she does. I'm not going to tell you anything about what happened when they did that because that would spoil it. So basically the boys are trying to expose her and basically it goes to hell. Everything that you could think of goes wrong. It is very, very creepy. It is very scary. The way they deal with her. On Halloween, they have a, a wicker woman burning and it's Catherine Van Wyler. It's, it's just a, a model of her. But if they 
have people come in during the festival of the Wicker Woman and she's standing in town, instead of hiding it, they put a sign on her saying five dollars and have your picture taken with the witch because it makes a joke out of it but it doesn't, it makes her part of their lives but the boys aren't happy so what is going to happen and that is where it gets scary the things that happen in this book are quite gruesome in places um, it's quite frightening and there is a twist at the end that just <laughs> you just think oh my god this you know this isn't this is just scary so things go wrong she can see she can speak her eyes are unchained what is going to happen who can save them well the only spoiler i'm going to give you is that the only people who can save them are themselves the only people who can save the town is the town but will they a lot happens that, oh, it was just so creepy. Every now and again, I will think of something and it'll take me back to the Black Rock Witch. I was out on Saturday night with my friends and I hadn't finished it then, but we were playing with Snapchat because I don't use it very often. And one of my friends snap, snapped a picture of himself, put a filter on it, and I thought, oh my God, that is the Black Rock Witch because it looked like his eyes and mouth were sewn up. It was freaky. It will stay with you. It is creepy. Some people have said the end is messy. It might be slightly different because it is a different writing style because obviously the first, the majority of the book was translated from the Dutch by the translator and then the last part was written by Thomas himself in English. So it, there is a slight difference, but I thought that the, the jumbledness of the end, the way it just went so fast was, it was just scary. It was, and the twist is very vintage Stephen King. So my recommendation would be to read it. I think I gave it a five out of five on Goodreads. It's definitely one of the books that I've read this year that I think is one of the best books I've read this year that actually came out this year. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I will probably read it again around Halloween just to, to chill out and have a, have a, 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 you know, just try to scare myself silly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Um, yeah. I mean, it was a gift from my brother, but even if I'd bought it myself, I would still be saying the same. It was a really good book. So I'm looking forward to anything else that he will bring, bring it out. This isn't his only book out in the Netherlands. So I'm hoping that some more of his will be translated soon. So yeah, I would say go check it out. I mean, if you don't want to buy it, get it from the library or download it onto your Kindle or ebook or Audible. I think it would be really creepy Audible. Um, I, if, if it's available, I, I'm, I'm going to get it on Audible, I think, to have a listen because I think it might be really creepy. But yeah, go out and do it. So that's all for me for this post. I'll be back soon with got loads of posts and videos planned. Next one is going to be about starting your Marilyn Monroe book collection if you're interested because that is my big love. Um, and I'll be back with that soon. So for now, bye!